Hey, everybody. It's the Drive to School podcast. I'm Pastor Goodman, and uh, my good friend, uh, the Deaconess Sarah Longmire, is here. How are you doing today, Sarah? I'm well. How are you, Pastor? Doing awesome. It is uh, Holy Week, and uh, so we're, we're, we're doing all this stuff. Um, seems like a, a good time to talk about suffering. Um, it, it's sort of a, a good place to center it. Uh, we when, when, when we hurt, it makes us selfish, and it, it sounds almost crass to say it that way because like it hurts but at the same time when, when you hurt it's hard to think about the thing outside of the thing that hurts and that's that's you so suffering by nature makes you selfish talking about suffering in the midst of holy week means that we sort of have to talk about jesus suffering um and where the two intersect so um just based on on all of that sarah is suffering a good thing or a bad thing Yeah. So it's interesting the way that you just talked about suffering, making us uh, like confront our selfishness, because I think, and this is going to be like my long answer to say, I consider suffering and even pain a gift. And let me sort of explain. Well, Jesus does too. So like, let's, he agrees with you at least he calls suffering a blessing. Um, So, so, you know, knowing that Jesus agrees with you, go in confidence. Uh, yeah, that's good. I like it. Um, (laughs) yeah. So, so when we suffer, we're confronted, um, I think with our first commandment issue, because we, Mm -hmm. um, would really love for ourselves as gods to be the best. And so the best can look like perfect health. The best can look like, um, top a student in the class, no matter how much sleep you lose or work you put into something that may or may not help in the future. Um, The best can look like having what you consider the perfect family or their perfect life or everything going according to, again, your plans. And in all of that, as I'm saying it, who's in the center of that? Me. (laughs) I get to decide and dictate and control my world. Um, When suffering happens, when pain happens, when there's a break in what my perfect pattern is, um, I'm confronted with my selfishness, then I'm consumed with my selfishness because pain hurts. Um, But ultimately, I think it leads to a humbleness that then brings you to the cross and to this idea of what grace really is, what Jesus suffering and death for you is. And how um, we as Christians receive, and that's a gift. We are dependent, and that's a gift. So that's kind of my long answer to, I think suffering is helpful. Yeah, it's not pleasant, but but it is used for good. Um, it, it's used for good because God uses it for good to win your salvation. But more than that, then, he uses it for good to put to death any idea that the God that you would be if you were in charge is a real thing. Um, suffering is sort of proof that you're not God and the way you want to do things isn't always going to work. Um, but it's also proof that the way that he has already done things worked just fine. Um, it, it, it's a chance then to, to sort of reflect on the idea of what it is to want to be a Christian because our, our – our, our symbol is a cross and, and cross is hurt. Um, it, it takes away sort of the idea of the Christian who who has pride in their own actions because everything has just turned up great since they gave their lives to Jesus. But rather, it's, it's John at the foot of the cross wondering why everybody else left and why his Lord is dying, um, even though he's been told it, it, it's it's peter fleeing uh from from uh the accusations it's it's mark fleeing from everyone without clothes it, it's it's everything that that we sort of would would gather up and say these are the things that i know help and it's turned upside down and, and held up against a cross which well did well yeah and i think about that word pleasant um we certainly like comfort and security within what we can control Mm -hmm. but okay have you ever have you ever received like socks as a present or like something else i love socks okay all right old now Uh, socks are awesome okay well okay when were they awesome when you were like six were they oh okay so so six-year-old pastor goodman um getting socks yeah like i'm sorry this is lame. Like, this is not what I wanted. This is not what I like insert the cool thing when you're six. Um, but was it useful? Was it necessary? Was it helpful? Was it good? 
Absolutely. And so I think when we, when we look at life and we consider pleasant from, again, our own point of view versus good and purposeful and reflective of grace, they're not going to match because in my head, that which is pleasant is not always helpful. And that which is painful is painful. Like I'm not minimizing that, but it is certainly useful and is certainly a gift. You know what I mean? So now socks for you. Thanks be to God. Okay. But whatever you don't like, no. can't about this. how about that? Like, there you go. All those are disgusting. So with, with okay. that in mind, then um, you get to start to recognize that, that what's useful here also is, is temporary. Um, there won't be olives in the resurrection uh, because olives are gross. You, I know that's not true, but um, so there won't be suffering in the resurrection uh, because we'll, we'll have been brought fully to glory. But, but now in this veil of tears, uh, it's not that God caused suffering. It's that we cause suffering to each other, but he's going to use it for good. We cause suffering to ourselves. We cause suffering to each other. And every single time we do it, it's because it seems like a good idea at the time, or I'm pretty sure this will feel good right now. And it leads to something painful later. But but rather, uh, we get to sort of say, all right, so if we keep creating a world of suffering by our own actions and sins, what's God going to do with that? He, he dives down into the mix, bears the suffering himself and carries us through it unto glory. And so it's not that like suffering is, is just the, the perfect thing and that the one thing Christians should seek out is suffering, but, but rather it, it's the idea that if, if God has given you suffering or if you have found yourself in suffering, even because of your own sins, God will not abandon you to it. Yeah. Well, then that makes me think about ultimately identity, Right. Mm -hmm. So we're thinking about my life is free from suffering. So I am good or comfortable or happy, whatever it is, or my life is in suffering. I'm struggling with it. And yet neither of those descriptors ultimately define you or claim you. So we all go back to our baptism. And that is what carries us through to the resurrection. That is what holds. So whether you, your suffering today is a stub toe or your suffering today is a cancer diagnosis, um, neither of those will define you moving forward. Mm -hmm. And there's grace in that there's gift in just real, like remembering and relaxing into you're baptized, like that gets to hold. And that, that's a win. That's, that's everything. I mean, I don't even know what to do to, to top that. So let's, let's call it there. Uh, Deaconess Sarah Longmire, thank you so much for joining us. You're very welcome.